And then, there was Rareware. Rareware's first game on the GameCube was Star Fox Adventures, the game that was once known as Dinosaur Planet, but is now known as that Star Fox game with barely any flying in it. I even heard it once called The Legend of Star Fox Ocarina of Space. Never badmouth Star Fox Adventures around me, it was a great game! The future seemed bright for Rareware on the GameCube. November 2002 edition Nintendo Power, page 22. In a section called Game Watch, there was a paragraph titled, A Rare Move. I'll read the high points. Nintendo recently announced that it had sold its 49% stake in Rare LTE and that the British developer would no longer make games exclusively for Nintendo GameCube. Nintendo will retain ownership of Donkey Kong, Star Fox and its other pre-existing franchises. Although Rare will no longer develop games for GC and don't be surprised to see future Rare titles on that. Although we declined the opportunity to continue our exclusive agreement with Rare, this announcement does not diminish our respect for their work or the past contributions they have made to Nintendo. I was shocked and... a little scared. No more rareware in this world? No, wait, why just handhelds? You see, back then, I didn't understand how publicly traded corporations worked. Instead of asking, why is Nintendo selling, I should have been asking, who's buying? Later the next year, which would be 2003 for those of you keeping notes, I was over at a friend's house. His family had just recently bought access to this interesting portal called Internet. We used a phone line to look at pictures and steal music. And then I decided... Rareware has a website. I'll take a look at that. And that's when I saw Microsoft staring back at me. Uh-oh. So that's the title of this series, Rareware on Microsoft. It's a short list of games that I would have been excited for if I wasn't playing my Nintendos. Let me clarify right now. It's only games that I was interested in. So grabbed by ghoulies, not on the list. Perfect Dark Zero, already covered in another video, Bump Maps. And I'm not just doing this because the Rare Replay was recently released. I've wanted to do this for a long time. A short run of Rareware on Xbox. This game... Hold on, I got an idea for later. And I know somewhere along the way they started calling themselves just Rare. But this is the company that made Donkey Kong Country 2 and this amazing intro. To me, they will always be Rareware. Now, let's talk about Conker's Bad Fur Day, Rareware's last game on the Nintendo 64. How can I sufficiently put this? Some developers make games. Some developers make different kinds of games. And some developers make Conker's Bad Fur Day. Ah! I'm so excited I finally get to talk about this! I'm one of the few people who bought the game new. And what makes it so good? It takes traditional platforming, of which Rareware is a master, and turns it on its ear. What I found appealing was there are so many components to Conker's adventure, so many well-developed characters, and the gameplay is always changing. I was never bored. Of course, when talking about Conker's Bad Fur Day, what is always highlighted is the crude humor, the pinnacle of endless proofs that the Nintendo 64 wasn't just for kids. For those of you just joining us, this whole Nintendo Kitty argument has been going on for a long time. I know, it is very immature. But I'm now nearly double my age when I originally bought this, and it still cracks me up. Let's not get too far into a praise review. Name? This video is for Conquer Live and Reloaded. So around yeah, 2005, I hear a remake no. is coming to the Xbox. And 10 years later, I'm finally about to play it. So what more could I possibly want from what is likely the best game on the Nintendo 64? Well, there's always something that can be fixed. Here are a few improvements I hope to see on the Xbox version. Number one, the frame rate. This game easily croaks at graphical intensity. Conquer walking into the menu is the first evidence. Part of my misconceptions about the Nintendo 64's frame rate came from playing so many Rareware games. They didn't really care about system limitations, just keep putting stuff on the screen. An improved frame rate is almost guaranteed when moving into the sixth generation. Number two, voiceovers. This might be a tall order, and I'm not saying the voiceovers are bad. The fact that a Nintendo 64 game had this much speech is quite amazing. It's just that some of the characters, and whenever Conk collects money, talk for the back of their throat and makes it really hard to understand. Number three, tone down the difficulty, guys. One thing that gets understated is that it isn't the easiest game to complete. Escorting all those damn bees, that frustrating key mission you had to get all in one shot, the final boss, one of the hardest bosses on the system. It's plucked right from Super Mario 64, except the room is a quarter of the size. And there's one bomb. And that bomb is really tiny. In all the time I've owned Conker's Bad Fur Day, I've only beaten it maybe three times, including this playthrough. Number four, the ending. Actually, Conker's Bad Fur Day didn't have an ending, just a point where stuff stopped happening. And I'm not talking about the joke at the beginning of the end cutscene. The game cuts off on such a downer, and with no sequel in sight, I would like to think that it was reworked. 
With my head held high, I grab my pristine, well-preserved copy of Conquer Live and Reloaded. I'm staying true to form by playing this one on an original Xbox. This Xbox belongs to Sarah, actually. I never owned one myself, so the joining of our console collections was beneficial. Neither of us had a PlayStation, though. eBay solved that. We both had a GameCube. Come on. You gotta have a GameCube. I want everyone to know that I bought this game for the very purpose of this video. I never read any reviews, never looked at footage online, never spoiled anything. Warning, this video contains spoilers. First thoughts? Holy God, the original Xbox is doing these graphics? Well, Rareware has always been renowned for graphics. Now, I don't have much of a frame of reference. The only true Xbox games I've played before are Halo and Halo 2. The plot remains unchanged from the original. Conker stumbles out of a bar, blacked out drunk, and ends up in an odd, faraway land. All Conker wants to do is get home. On his path are strangers with problems that he must fix, and he eventually gets sidetracked in the pursuit of money. There is also a B-plot that crosses Conker's path from time to time. The ruler of this land is the Panther King, and the biggest issue he faces is he constantly spills his milk. He gets a scientist working on the problem, and a good portion into the game it is revealed that the only solution is to put a red squirrel, Conker, in the place of the broken leg. Yeah, the plot of Doom makes more sense than this, but the cartoony art style makes it all okay. So, as I mentioned before, the visuals are great, and concerning the frame rate, it's perfectly stable. It doesn't scream 60 frames per second, but we're not playing Street Fighter, just platforming. There is a strange pause right before the first spoken words in a cutscene, specifically every cutscene. This is caused by the system loading the audio on the spot, rather than with the video assets. I'm guessing here, I say as I record from my parents' basement while pushing my glasses back up onto my nose. I don't know the inner workings of an Xbox, that's probably what's happening. While on the subject of sound, there was no overhaul of the voiceovers, but they really don't have to, because the voices are the way, way clearer. Okay, really? audio compression is something I do know, and compression is one of the first things you see in Conker's Bad Fur Day. With the incredible increase in oh, storage space, I'm sure power. Rareware revisited the original oh, recordings and exported so at a higher bitrate. I say as I head back upstairs to microwave more pizza bites while mean? my dad tells me what I a disappointment I am. Think. There it is, a better looking, better sounding Conker. The glorious adventure is the same. Rareware is great with the Collection Fest platforming, but they put all of that behind them. Collect 100 Dooza Hickles and 200 Jabbadees? No! Steal a beehive and give it back to the queen. Cut a pitchfork down after a botched suicide. Get the cow to drink prune juice. Sacrifice a baby T-Rex. Piss the rock into a tunnel. Blast your way into an inheritance. Fight off the evil teddies. And you know I'm a fan of Over the Top. Yes, it is crude. But just look past that for a moment. All the characters are so well developed in their crudeness and so memorable. Look, whether you enjoy it or not, you will never forget the great Mighty Pooh. And to the point of crudeness, Live and Reloaded is oddly more censored than Bad Fur Day. How did we march backwards on this? You move away from Nintendo and have to cut out more? And the words they chose are ridiculous. How about some scat, you little twin? That is the British pronunciation of a word that nobody ever says. F Oh, that was not the F word, and hardly cussing. The first playthrough can easily clock in at 15 hours. Not really that bad for a platforming game, but it was the source of criticism upon its initial release. While it didn't bother me, I think it was a sore spot because there is no such thing as a side mission. You play Bad Fur Day, you do everything. I'm thankful the difficulty has been reworked, and it's mostly due to having a bat instead of a frying pan. Yeah, Conker's Bat has double the range of a frying pan. I'm laughing just making this comparison. Oh, and the last boss beat it first try. Because, get this, you can jump while in the blocking state. That's all I wanted 10 years ago. But the ending still sucks. I can't call Live and Reloaded the definitive version. I mean, with the added censorship, no headshots on the teddies. The loading times are kind of obnoxious. But I will say it is the version to play. This remake was a good idea. Online? Yeah, <laughs> right. Conquer also appears on the Rare Replay, and I don't know how I feel about this one. It returns to the N64 graphics, and right along with it, the crappy audio. Now, Live and Reloaded patched up audio with new recordings to match the new controls. Rare Replay is a ROM hack, so this is the result. Then just press the L button. Yes, that is the L button. Basically, you're getting a super upscaled N64 game. At least we get back maximum cussing. There was something else about the Xbox One that unexpectedly hurt the game. It's hard to explain. It's almost like the controller is too 
good. I'm not used to playing Conker with sticks that are so smooth and responsive. It made controlling him a bit unwieldy. Good thing I do research before posting some videos. There is a sequel to Bad Fur Day, sort of. It's called Conker's Big Reunion. It's episodic content inside Project Spark. I downloaded Project Spark back in the days of Windows 8.1. I've already upgraded to Windows 10. I set up a few things and saw the unique power of it, but I'm a programmer's programmer. Building something in someone else's engine is... uncomfortable. A what year later, the entire setup has been revamped, complete with a Jim Cummings voice guide. Now, am I the only one that finds it weird that Conker, whose previous platformer was bombarded with warnings of a limited target audience, is now a Microsoft mascot in a free download with no rating? I wanted to play this on the Xbox One because, no surprise, the Xbox One is more powerful than my PC. I can't get very far because there is a first person shooting section and the aiming is backwards. I'm sorry, but GoldenEye Rareware taught me that inverted aiming is normal. And yes, I tried changing the control settings. It doesn't do a damn thing. So on to the PC we go. Set 10 years after Bad Fur Day, Conker is celebrating 10 years after the Bad Fur Day. Of course, he goes too far and Birdie helps him get back into shape and tells him that everyone is meeting at the Cock and Plucker for a big reunion. Before Conker can get in, he has to pay his tab. How? You guessed correct. He has to find that money. Super happy to have another Conker game, but... Not like this. Not like this. It feels like a consulting firm was hired to make a Conquer platformer, which may very well be true. Big Good Reunion really tries to hit to the high points of Conquer, and to be fair, it's yes, it keeps the humor in platforming of the predecessor. You infiltrate three areas controlled by the evil teddies and claim the money at the end. Being episodic, it only takes about an hour to beat. Considering that this was built in Project Spark, I should be amazed. Instead, I'm just saddened it doesn't have a dedicated engine. You know, the kind that actually inverts a stick. Then I was having buyer's remorse for going to the PC, because only having 8 directions to move with the keyboard is really clunky. So I ended up using a 360 controller and a mouse at the same time. You think I'm joking. I'm also a little sore that, being built for tinkering, the only pause options are edit from here and quit. No saving. Man, I don't always have a solid hour to play video games. What? But that's a personal problem. Good thing I take forever to make a video, because while reviewing the Xbox One footage, I happened to see this in the corner. Why? Literally, why? Why would you hide the option here and not put it here like every game with two sticks? And further, why is this even here? Probably a side effect of using Project Spark. Well, it screwed up my experience. Rareware, take your franchise back. Just to make sure we don't ever have to play Conker again, here's a freebie. Conker's Pocket Tales for the Game Boy Color. Cool, now I've played two Rareware N64 remakes, there's Subpar Cannon, and a Game Boy Color franchise entry. Pocket Tales is about Conker's birthday party being interrupted by an evil acorn who steals his girlfriend and all his presents. Man, this is what Conker was before Bad Fur Day? <laughs> That's a hard move. You roam around the area near his house looking for the stolen gifts. Unfortunately, I can't get very far in this one because the battery pack inside is shot, so I can't save on this game either. Wait a sec. Conker is also a playable character in Diddy Kong Racing. Um... The end. I wonder if she ever ripped any CDs. Here she comes in her palanquin. Uh, uh, off.